something double digit value. <laughs> What's up guys, Tyler Bear Dripping here. Welcome back to the channel, thank you for tuning in. We have come to Excess Power for a car audio show today. I think they're also having a car show to judge the best looking cars, but uh, as you can hear, the music is very loud around here, and there is a ton of cars playing different songs, so it's kind of confusing, but this is pretty cool. I've never been to one of these, but I think a lot of people put a lot of money in audio, and you can just appreciate it. I want you guys to look at this. This is awesome. That is an ice cream truck. That ice cream truck is dope. We'll make our way back around to the back. So anyway, the reason why we're here today, uh, East 10 Drift is actually, we've got a tent set up over in the front of the building and we're just kind of representing today. I uh, brought my car, put it under the tent, so hopefully we can make East 10 look good today and uh, get some people interested in the drift scene. We've got shirts, merchandise, uh, hats, stickers, everything. This is what I mean by we can appreciate what they've done. Look at all of the stuff that goes into this. I don't know what this board does, but it looks very complicated. And the big amps. This is some money. Even more, like they don't even have a back seat. Just straight speaker in a hand. More speaker in the door. Sound deadening. So we made our way around and saw a couple of cool things. We're gonna go back to the tent for a little bit. We got our nice little setup over here. We got the Magma Z. Some bar stones. Right? Yeah. We got the TB drift machine. And we got our East 10 girl. <laughs> so there's a, a Hearst over here and literally every door has speakers in it. And we're gonna go over here and check it out. We got the East 10 crew, Steven. Yes sir. Kimbo. Tyler. So this is the other door to this thing. Uh, some sponsors of the car, I guess. More speakers. More speakers. Um, it's pretty cool. He's got a, a Tyler Berry nitrous bottle in there. That's pretty cool. I, I support it. And he's got, looks like he's got BMW window switches. Awesome. So we have left the car show, audio show. We went to Panera, ate some lunch with everybody, and now we are at Rise Fab Wild Running. <laughs> this is their headquarters, I guess. We got all the, well, one wild running car in here right now, but the owner of this shop is a wild running feller. He's got some stuff in here that he's working on for some people. He is a fabricator, so builds cages, uh, just a lot of custom fab work. Uh, taking a look at some of the stuff that he's doing. Looks like he's got a, a lot that he's gonna do on this one. Looks like he's already started bending. Is this for the cage? Yeah. Bending for the cage. What exactly do you do? What are you focused on? Um, motorsports chassis works. So we have stainless steel, aluminum, um, roll cage, front two bumpers. Um, you know, otherwise called bash bars. Uh, a lot of just general fab and things like that, integral you know, popping. Just basic stuff, you know, if somebody wants to come in here and get some things done, on me. So as far as fit up and everything else, we try to get everything as, as close as we possibly can to make it more comfortable on the, uh, the end user. 
It's pretty close. Yeah, it, it matches actually all the way through here. So this all will be stitch welded or fully welded all the way through here. So Just would that be a advantage of having a custom cage done? Uh, like, like for fitment, one? like you got a closer fit with a custom cage as opposed to like a mass produced? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, most, most definitely. Yeah, I mean, you, you get something that is, is still fine tuned, um, but, but is specific to the customer's needs and, and wants and things like that. Sometimes customers want to be able to get out of the car easier, so they want lower door bars. They may not be doing a competition, but, but need something that passes tech, but is still safe at the same time. Right. And that's something that you know I try to uh, to to go over with with the customer, make sure that they're happy in the end. Most of the cages you do are they spec cages or are they just fabbed up for the customer's wants or both? A little bit of both. Uh, drifting um, in the drifting community, it's a whole lot more lax. They st I still like to follow certain guidelines, which is usually form the D spec, and then it kind of gets a little bit more either. Uh, less crazy or more crazy again just depending on what the customer wants um, but more or less as far as a drift oriented cage is concerned they're, they're basic as far as you know rules guidelines and, and the full structure of it six point with like anti-intrusion bars um, a lot of guys just need just regular old X braces and some rear down tubes that, that generally go to like the strut tower or the rear frame section or something like that um, but I have done cages for, for Time Attack series. I have full rule books on that. Uh, cages for um, NASA spec, which is a whole lot more involved. Uh, they have sizing and thickness um, specs specific to the car's weight. Um, so you have to kind of keep that in mind whenever you're building the car. Uh, so the next thing I'll be doing here on this one is uh, fitting up this down tube, which I've already pre-bent over to here and pretty much match this section. From there, um, go to this, uh, what I call forehead tube. And the forehead tube goes here. It should go in between this section right here. Is the, the end goal to have it match up. And essentially look like that from one section to the other. Okay. And sometimes mistakes happen. Yeah. You essentially have to, 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 to go roll the punches. I try to uh, mock things up in different material before I actually go to the expensive DOM tubing that's uh, expensive enough. Thanks, Trump. So yeah, you guys kind of get the idea of what he does. I mean, I, I feel like he enjoys it enough to where today's a Saturday and he wants to devote his time to come in here and not only help friends, but help guys in the drifting community to make their cars better or make them, you know, FD legal. Um, just anything that needs custom fab work, he's, he's pretty much the go-to guy for a lot of guys in the community. So I can't even tell you what these machines do, but they look pretty cool. I guess this is the pipe. Cutter. Yeah, it just cuts. cuts Tube cutter. Yeah, cuts fingers off and stuff. Cuts fingers off, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so do you prefer a certain chassis or are you open to like everything? Chassis ones? Oh no, I um uh, I like generally anything. I mean there's stuff that I like working on more than others just because that's my personal preference on on what cars tickle my fancy. And maybe even as the company progresses and it gets bigger and bigger, um, Probably taper off a little bit more on trying to do something cages and do a more uh, mass-produced, specific manufactured pieces, whether that be manifolds or machine pieces or something like that. But only time will tell. It just, you know, yeah. just depends on things. So now, are you right now? I guess your main thing is cages. It is. Yeah. It's, um, it's good bread. So yeah, good bread and butter. I guess after you do like four or five cages, it comes natural. Like as far as well, this looks like a. A 45 degree bend. This is a 72. I, th I think I can make this work, actually, as opposed to actually having to like mark, measure, cut, put it up, mark, measure, cut. Like. Yeah. Yes and no. I mean, there's still mistakes that happen here and there, but the more that you do a particular chassis, the less mistakes end up happening. Um, with what I have, uh, I have once I do a cage, everything is is then saved into uh, a particular file that I have, and with the program that I run. I'm able to recreate those bins over and over and over. Like on this cage, all the bins and stuff that was done was done within a few hours. And then from there, it's just notching. There's still a lot of things that I'll have to cut and do by hand, but the less that I have to do with my eyeballs and just my two hands, the absolute better. Take right. the human error out of stuff. We're gonna take off, and I think Steven's gonna take us mountain biking, but I don't know how it will, I'll do, but Chris? been a pleasure no problem, man. Thank, thank you, you. Yeah. hopefully we can get together soon maybe talk cage yeah. Yeah. No
for end of the year. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna head out of here. So. Bye. <laughs> so somehow, Stephen has talked me into going with him and Rick to go mountain biking. Mountain biking. <laughs> so this is gonna be my first time ever going to any trails. See how it goes. See if we can make it out alive. Try not to kill ourselves. <laughs> well, guys, we managed to survive a day of BMX riding. Um, today has been a good day, all in all. Went to the car show this morning, the audio show. That was fun. Got to represent East 10 Drift. Um, thanks, Louie, for letting us go out and, and represent. I'm glad we got to talk to Chris today a little bit about what he does at RiseFab. Um, hopefully you guys can check him out and uh, if you're local here of course and maybe he can do some fab work for you um, like I said earlier hopefully we can get with him and maybe do a cage at the end of the year to get ready for program next year uh, um, maybe if we have the money we can go tube front tube rear and just run overs but all in all it's been a good day and uh, I think I'm gonna close out the video here uh, we just got back and and unloaded everything I actually let Steven drive the drift car uh, home so he can take it to Cars and Coffee tomorrow. So he left this beauty here. Um, unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to make it to Cars and Coffee tomorrow. So just figured if he's going, if he wants to drive it, he can. So, but uh, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hit that like button, subscribe. Hopefully more videos to come and uh, we'll see you next time. Keep calm and drift on.